Exercise 7a, Translation of Functions. Functions are used to model real life events, being, uh, being able to model how far a disease is spread or uh, being able to measure how uh, the temperature of liquid cools. And the, uh, the way we model those, the way we create the equations that will predict what will happen, has to come from a template of some kind. And we start with these little templates and then we either move them, dilate them or combinations of the two. And today what we're going to do is we're going to be starting with those original templates and then moving them about in a process that we call translation. But there's a lot of all sorts of different terms and phrases that we need to go and have a look at. So today what we're going to do is at least examine some of that terminology and then we're going to go and do some examples. The first term is translation. What does this mean? Well, it doesn't mean turning into another language, but if you can think about that, if I'm translating it to another language, I'm moving from uh, the words from one particular language into another. Well, this is exactly what this means. We're moving a particular function. So when we translate something, as is the example, the coordinates three, four is a translation of one, two, two units right and two units up. Positive X direction. This just means we're moving a graph to the right. Negative x direction. That just means we're moving something to the left. Positive y direction. This just means moving up. Negative y direction. Well, that must mean we're moving it down. Image. Much in the same ways that when I switch on my TV, there's an image on it. But where did it come from? Well, it had to be filmed from a real object. So I've got a real object. I film it, and what I film, that is the image of that original object. Well, in the same way, the image of a set of coordinates or a function is the final transformed equation or set of coordinates. Map. In this case, map is a verb. So to map something, to if you can imagine when we're looking at a map, we're seeing where we need to go. Well, um, to map, as in the verb, as in the action, is means that I'm doing the steps, I'm applying the transformation to get to our final image. X apostrophe and Y apostrophe. These are both symbols for meaning the transformed version of X and the transformed version of Y. Although please note, when we put an apostrophe next to these X's and Y's, please do not get it confused with F apostrophe brackets x, because that usually means the derivative of the function. And that's something we're not going to cover until we look at calculus. So don't get these confused. Example 7a.1. Find the image of the point negative 5, 10 after a mapping of a translation, a, of two units in the positive direction of the x-axis and three units in the negative direction of the y-axis. Now you could do this visually, by having a look, if we were to put a set of coordinates in here. So negative 5, 10. That's going to be about here, isn't it? There's negative 5, 10. Two units in the positive direction of the x-axis. We're going to go 1, 2. So that's going to be at negative 3, 10. And then three units in the negative direction of the y-axis. 1, 2. And there we go, so we get negative three and seven. It's our final answers. We can also show this using some algebra and a little system of numbers and coordinates. We start by saying that the coordinates of x, y, or the, oh, can we also use the, uh, this could also be used for functions and things like that. So in here, what we've got is we've got the X values are being moved. What was it saying? Two units, the positive X direction. We're also seeing that the in the Y axis, we're going in three units in the negative direction. Therefore, all I would need to do is I would need to go and substitute those X's and Y's for the coordinate. So here we go, we can put in, uh, uh, the original one was 5 plus 2, and we've got 10 minus 3, and so that becomes negative 3 and 7.
When solving these particular questions, and if it's just purely translations that you're doing, a little diagram is a perfectly suitable way to be able to find where the final uh, coordinate is. However, if you would like a little bit more of a systematic process and you don't need to worry about drawing, the uh, method on the left is the one that you should aim for. For the following examples, I'm going to be following the method on the left. B, of two units in the negative direction of the x-axis and four units in the positive direction of the y-axis. I'm going to apply the same method as I did before. And our final coordinates are negative 7 and 14. Let's have a look at C. C has been written already in the format that was describing as the left-handmost method. Defined by the rule xy forms x minus 4, y plus 5. This was a little bit easier because we could just do a substitution of negative 9 and 15. D. Defined by the rule xy for a, forms x minus 2 and y minus 1. So this is saying that this has been translated two units in the negative x direction and one unit in the negative y direction. And there we go. The final coordinates for that is negative 7 and 9.